Hello and welcome to the Car Huddle. That's right. It's a special podcast that we've decided to uh, put on, and it is with myself, Hugh Hattrick, with Andrew Marr, and with Hello. Jonathan Sutherland. We thought we've all gone so mad because we've been locked up for so long, we can only make this a podcast. The video will sadly not be available unless you hack into my computer. But here we go. <laughs> it's all going to be about the obviously what we do on the show, the Car Sim and Race Driver show, um, how we've got on in the last wee while, and our kind of banter in between. And <laughs> already, these two are about to burst out laughing. Now, no, I'm, I'm trying, trying to keep it in. Yeah, you told, actually, told so. I thought they said, is, is it not a dressing up show? And I said, no. So we've got one who looks a bit like Eddie Izzard, and another one who, uh, or now you said cars with Hatchigal, oh, that's not quite so bad. Um, and you've got your alpha in the background there. So mm -hmm. I managed to get, we've had an hour and a half of warm up, would you believe? It's taken an hour and a half to get us ready to a point where we can even record a podcast. But <laughs> only because you didn't press record, it would have been brilliant. It would have been brilliant. Mm. I mean, our listeners, they have missed out on great innovations like gardening with Kate Beckinsoil. <clears throat> or Nigella Lawson cooks a cabbage. Exactly. Bear in mind, this, this, is is this is the kind of quality <laughs> content that we miss. Anyway, Hugh, what do you want to talk about with the, the channel? And Dan, just, just uh, I am Jonathan, who's Hugh's good old friend and a political mind when um, I'm on the chat. Obviously, giving Hugh a bit of grief from a very friendly point of view, of course, at all times. And uh, Rue is Andrew Andrew Marr, who's up here. Except we're not doing videos, so that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question would be, and I'll put it to Andrew first. As you're oh. in the chat and you're kind of watching uh, very kind of uh, every week, which is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And you've been there right the way through as we kind of redid the show from August onwards, doing our gaming on a Monday and then our interviews on a Thursday. Um, how do you think the last four months have gone? Because um, as, as I say, we know we've had good growth on the channel, which is fantastic. We thank everyone who's been who's subscribed yeah. and who's been watching us. Um, <clears throat> do you think, what, what do you think has changed that has, has, has kind of helped the show to do a lot better? Well, I mean, <clears throat> before it was a sort of a motorsports F1 show, wasn't it? Yeah. And we also talked nonsense. Well, I did. You didn't. Um, and... <coughs> Excuse me. Start again. You're not killing another guest, are you, Hugh? Yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> Hello, virus. <laughs> so it was. I thought it was interesting, but we were competing in a in in a, a market that, that has got some pretty big players and is saturated. Um, yeah. In the sense that we were talking about Formula One, and it's a big sport. It's the biggest spectator sport in the world. So there's lots of stuff out there, and how do you be different and be noticed? And you can't. But you were always very interested in the sim racing side, because um, basically a big kid, and um, that worked brilliantly. We, we we had that chat that time, didn't we? You, me, and, and the big J down there, <clears throat> uh, and we were talking about that you're so good at interviewing, you're so good at, you're so passionate about the sim racing side of things. Why not give that a go? And that has proven to be great because. The community is so tight and so friendly and so forgiving uh, and so diverse that it, 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 it just seems to appeal to a bunch of mad people that uh, like to pretend to drive on a computer and then take the mick out of each other. It's just kind of like, I mean, I'm not being rude about that. That's, I mean, that's pretty much what you, you keep saying that it's a great way of accessing motorsport for yourself without needing a million pound budget for your car and your team and, and every weekend and all this kind of stuff. We, we can all have a go as long as we can get the equipment and, and, and do well in it. And I think that has helped the appeal of the show because there's no one else out there doing this kind of stuff. There's people doing sim stuff and there's people streaming and there's people, <clears throat> I don't know, doing reviews of games and stuff, but there's, there's nobody sort of going, oh, you ordinary person, and you, not you know, very famous person. What well, got you started in this? Let's talk. And I like. I think that's what's appealed to people. Um, then you, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not really the person to to ask whether you've improved as a driver. I think you have, but you know, I'm no expert on it, so I can't really say. But I think you've got better. Uh, it's been hilarious watching you get frustrated. 
honestly, that you know, let's let's not beat around the bush and pretend here. You <laughs> losing your rag with some twerp from I don't know Germany or Belgium that decides that <clears> that two inches on the inside of the corner is plenty, <laughs> and then you get the penalty. It's just hilarious. It's brilliant. <laughs> That's great. Nothing was as good as watching you on a set of Corsa on Sunday, however. That was just superb. Because, she, I mean, um, I, I know I'm going to be disagreed with in a minute, but the setup, the setup was kind of boring because we couldn't see what the setting up was. But a setup video would be ace because how kind many people. Kind of boring. <laughs> I think it was <laughs> unbelievably boring. Well, it was because it consisted of going, well, click there, no, click there. That's not the same thing as... Adjusting the text on, a, on a, a, <clears throat> a bunch of pixels on the screen. It, but, it, it, oh, come on. But the fact that you got... The fact, the fact that you chose... You chose to go into that pendulum with wheels known as a Porsche 911 in a game that's... A sim that's got real physics... It was hilarious. You got half a corner in your span. It was brilliant. <laughs> and <laughs> me and John may or may not have been making a couple of comments as this was happening. <laughs> uh, and um, But you got better. You yeah. were driving around. You got really good in the middle when somebody else was driving. That was excellent. You did. You were very, 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 very good at it by, by the end of it. But the setup yeah, was a bit tough. Good. And I think the, the, the good, good, numbers good. of viewers did go from around about 20 just to Andrew and I by the end. So I yeah. think as far as, the channel, as far as the channel goes, I think that should be... One in the morning. morning. One in the morning. Well, I this I, the one at a time. No, no. But I mean, Hugh can keep 20, 25, 30 people to one in the morning sometimes. And I think where the channel, I think I agree with Andrew that when we were chatting away, kind of the only people that we were amusing was probably ourselves. But what oh, you do with the sim is um, very much uh, enjoyed by a lot of people. And I think there are people who do streaming, but I think you bring a warmth and you bring people together. And that, along with your interviews, where you've kind of created a community within sim racing, I think you're a, you're a, a big part of it already, and can become a, a much bigger part of it in the future. So that's mm. that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And big. my my second question would be: uh, We've had some fantastic guests on the show really since August, since we really started it all. Um, what do you think of how the guests have gone and how it's all? Because I think we've we've always had quite a good response, um, and. Mm. and, and uh, mm. How do you think, as you as a viewer watching it, does it come over fairly well, or do you think well, there's ways that we can change it or improve it? I enjoyed the first aid course with Super GT. That was very good. CPR for beginners with uh, Super <laughs> GT. That was excellent when you almost killed him. Um, no, but ser seriously, I think oh, it go really well. I mean, I'm well, not going to mention names. Some people are are really easy to interview. Some people I can tell that you're struggling a bit with. Perhaps they need to get out of the basement a bit more. But the <laughs> generally, you do very very well, and you 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 manage to bring 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 the best out of people. I think put them at ease so that they will talk freely to you. Uh, yeah. I agree. You're you're a very good interviewer. You've got you've got your questions. You 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 stick to point when we let you, and um, <laughs> so you're doing very well now. If they if they knew the last hour and a half, if they could hear tenth of it, they would be like, "How the hell are they just talking? What's going on? Why is why none of them where it got a got a, a minion and talking through his mouth? Isn't that strange. But um, I I will mention a name." <clears throat> All of the guests have been great because they've been themselves. And obviously some of them have been nervous, some of them haven't been nervous, some of them have been at six o'clock in the morning in Australia, <laughs> sat there, you know, like going, uh, um, and, and you've, you've done well. I think you've done really well. But I think the turning point, the big, you were very lucky in that you got Rory. Yeah, yeah. That, and it wasn't just that he had a lot of followers because you've had people with more followers since. Mm -hmm. It was that people, he, he was so easy to interview yeah. and had a lot to say and and i think he's got quite a loyal fan base as well so they sort of saw you yeah. and went yeah, right were. okay you know we can we can run with this fella yeah. uh, even the ones that don't understand the word you're saying because you're weird and scottish <laughs> <clears throat> i'd like to point out because i always do a ruse rant 
I'd like to point out that the British accent, which many Americans seem to think exists, doesn't. There is no such thing as everybody here on this podcast now has a British accent because we're all British. But he's Scottish. He's, I don't even know what he is. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm something. And there's no such thing. There's no British accent. So, mm-hmm. so well, I, I think you're pretty clear, up. Hugh. I think you come across clearly on oh, the, 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 the stream. Um, yes, but he's an American. I, I like the way you you um, let your emotions show sometimes when you get penalties. The, you, we, <laughs> and it, it's a, we can all share the frustration. And, you know, I think some streamers, are, they're very, very professional. Not, you're not professional, but they, they keep a very straight sort of um, commentary. But you let the emotion come come through. You definitely bring a... a um, uh, yeah, you, you see your personality come, come out in it, and I think it's good. I think people like it. He's the Kimi Raikkonen of the Borders region. <laughs> Hopefully I'm easier to interview than that. But I do like, we do have some phrases. I know you were doing it on Monday. Um, I, and I realised how many times I was saying that. And I, I was saying, let's see what we let's can do. Let's see what we can you know? do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great phrase. It's a great phrase. Is that what um, Abby, is it Abby Titmus, which is the Top Gear driver? He's, um, she, she used to say uh, before she set off on the Top Gear, or the Grand Tour, the Grand Tour driver. All right, with that, Abby. Oh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Is it Abby Titmus? Because I think Abby Titmus might be a glamour mother. I think that's oh, Abby else. Titmus is a glamour model. No, it's Abby Eaton. <laughs> yeah. Abby Eaton. Yeah. Abby. What did she? <laughs> what What did Abby Eaton I used to say before be she? Um... You know. <laughs> what, what did What did What did, um, what, what did Abby Eaton used to say? Did she used to say, "Let's see what you we can do"? You couldn't have got those people more confused. <laughs> or was it just <laughs> a, "Let's go"? Yeah. No, I don't watch that. But uh, but yeah. No, no, we've, we've been very used to say, she, used, she used to say something, didn't she, before she started racing the lap. She always used to say something. It was something like, let's go, or let's see what we can do. <clears throat> have to look at that. Does it? Sure it's Clark's in Euroberg, because I would probably watch it if she did that. Uh, I can't remember what it was that she said, to be fair. Um, I'll need to look at That's a good catchphrase. So you've got, let's win it at the first corner, drive fast and try yeah. not to crash, and let's see what we can do. Mm. I'm jealous. Right, because I have not got a catchphrase. I've suggested several. I can't remember any of them now. Uh, apart from the in your pants one, that's quite good. I like that one. But I haven't got a single catchphrase. Just you two. <laughs> I know it's it is good. So we've got some great guests coming up. Of course, we've got Super GT again coming up um, in uh, next week, and um, we've got Gaz Sims when this goes out. Uh, hopefully, it will go out today. Um, that will be tomorrow, which is the twenty first of uh, January. Um, and uh, do you think also because we, we interviewed Thea, I mean, we've had one or two female, uh, also Annie Roberts as well, um, who's kind of female eye racer and things like that. Do you think we should get a few more? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's so funny. You know, we've lost <laughs> Rue. What, what did you say? He's gone red. He, and he said, you know, Annie, who's kind of female. No, I said, <laughs> Annie, who's a female eye racer too. I said, she does eye racing. She's very good. From the central belt, she is. Um, uh, she's very, she's good. I mean, she's and she's quite new to racing. Very good. Um, but obviously, we're trying to get more. We would have had quick Gabby, but unfortunately, she couldn't quite make it. So we'll try and get her back. But who do you like? virus. Yeah, so there's something. But, uh, I'm sure she'll come back. But I mean, I would like this um, cookies and cars, which I would like to get. I think because she's a she's a rally driver and she does lots of rallying and stuff, and she's got she's a big following as well. But who else would you like to see on the show? If we could have a dream list. Who would it be? Well, I think Kate Beckinsale would be excellent. If you can interview her, as I said before, not sure she's, going, she's got much to do with sim racing, but that would be good to see Kate again. And um, try and give it the car. Oh, um, you know, the Katie Cats. That's what she would be, be her name, I think. It's the car huddle. Give it about car. <laughs> car huddle. Mm. Remember that we used to do when we first did podcasts, we had a letter, a, a, a kind of paper with things not to say or not tangents not to go down. So it's the car, this is about our show. So Martin Brundle. Yes, David. We, oh, just for the viewers, we're before, in the warm up, we had a great tangent when we were preparing, can you believe we prepared for this show, which was we had a tangent about tangents. I said we're going yeah. to a tangent, and then Rue and I had a discussion about what a tangent was, and she was there falling asleep while we were discussing for five minutes. What a tangent was, which is a lovely tangent. 
To be fair, he did. He, he fell asleep more when we were talking about something to do with cars, electric That's superchargers. True. That's true. Yeah, we if we'd have told it was a computer electric supercharger, like a simulated one, he probably would have woken up now. <laughs> That's the great thing about being able to edit things out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I think you'll get some, but some editing practice after this one, Hugh. The, um, yeah, we well, yeah, think well, I, I think you talk about Martin Brundle, but I think really keep it to to Sims. I mean, I think the community that you've got is very much um, passionate about sim racing. So you, why not bring don't bring people from real racing in unless they have a real passion for for sim racing? Who I did yeah. listen to a podcast about. It was a podcast I think with uh, Chris Harris, um, and that's mm -hmm. Dario Franchitti is massively into sim racing. So he's someone that yeah, you could yeah. talk to because he's got a big he's following. Yeah, I would like to. And he's been to Duns a few times as well. Exactly. Um, I went to the farm in Edinburgh, right outside my old flat. Um, he was on St. Leonard Street there. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he would be great. And he does come down here because he's involved with the Jim Clark Trust. So yeah, I think it's in the Lotus Cortina is actually in the museum in Duns at the moment. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. Uh, Jensen Button, hasn't he started doing sim racing yeah. recently? Yeah. So it will be quite interesting to get, you know, an experienced F1 driver that everybody knows and likes, world champion, now yeah. doing GT racing with his own team and all this kind of stuff. With a, with a, one of the fastest is one of the fastest sim racers is is put in his team. Is that yeah. right? Um, yeah. To to sort of get his. How's this started then, gents? You know, <clears throat> how are you going? Are you are you getting any better? How did you find F1? Helped you when you got in a sim rig, you know. It's, I just, it'd, it'd be interesting to, to get someone that's that experienced and find out how they, how they progressed yeah. around it. Yeah, there's still a very, when... there's a very clear division within sim racing of sort of professional drivers who use simulators to improve their racing. And then you've got mm. the sim racers who sort of just like charging around on GT Sport. From my point of view, I quite like watching the racing. You know, the whereas Rue likes yeah. watching the technical side, the setup. I like watching you sort of, you know, swap wing mirrors, and, um, you know, dipshits from around around the world and swear at them. I mean, it's that to me is hilarious. So, I mean, it's, it's where you decide the channel goes, whether it's down the professional route or more down the the gaming route. I think it was with Adam Croft at the beginning, who obviously yeah. very interesting guy. Um, we've both met him, like him a lot, a lot of respect for him. Mm. He's very much down the sort of serious sim racing to improve your racing. Whereas I think a lot of your viewers quite like the the gaming side of it and the the kind of yeah. the penalties, the controversies that go with 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 that. So it's fine tuning it again to exactly who your audience is. Hmm. I mean, I, I wasn't suggesting we get on button and, to, and talk to him about the sim side in terms of improving his racing. I mean, that from what I'd heard, he's in this last year he's got into sim racing. You know, actually, yeah. what we're talking about, doing it for fun. Um, so I, my sort of angle on it was, yes, he's, he's spent tons of time in sims over the years, but they're, they're, these are £10 million pound sims, not... Yeah. You know, well, the other um, night I watched a little bit of... When you were racing with Basic Ollie, I went on, on my other phone and I watched Basic Ollie racing his Alpha 4C in that race that you were at at Lake Majore. And he was so funny. I mean, he's a real gamer. He's just laughing his head off. Oh, yeah, oh, I might hit him off, you know, laughing away. And it was it was really fun. I, I it wasn't a, a a kind of serious race at all. He was just doing it purely for laughs, and yeah. um, he, he's yeah. he's very good at it. Uh, you you kind of get you you're on the sort of ground in between him and maybe one of the more serious race. You're sort of between Basic Ollie and maybe Rory the way you are, and yeah. you do take it seriously, but you have a laugh as as well. That's probably where most people yeah. are. I, mean, I, do, I think that's where I, when I when I managed to if I if I managed to get past someone and it's a slightly dodgy move, but I, but I don't get a penalty. Then I do go a bit quiet. I, I love do, it. Oh, I say nothing at all. It. And I'm like, I go, mm, <laughs> a chat. That was an interesting <laughs> move, Andrew. <laughs> and then if someone, <laughs> someone taps you slightly, you're like, that's terrible. He should get a penalty. He should get a penalty. And then you just T bone <laughs> someone going into a hairpin and you just come out and say, and you went, oh, well, that worked out nicely. And then there's just silence for like the next three corners. <laughs> yeah. When you got the last corner, or two corners from the end, or whatever it was on Monday. Oh, after yeah. that, guy sort of punted past you, and you kind of, it was the first, I think that's the first time I can remember you going, All right, then, gloves off now, is it? And just yeah. going, You did it, I'll do it. Boing, straight past the guy, using him to sort of get you around the corner. 
And he, I don't know whether he got a penalty or whatever, but you didn't. And it was like, yes, finally. Exactly. Finally. It was, I loved that. That was excellent. And then you come out, you come out with, um, well, I was a bit firm getting up there. And I'm like, yeah, just a little bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it is. It, it, you are the master of understatement when you take someone oh, out. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> So a few interruptions there. There was opening and closing, but uh, <laughs> but no, no, that's that's it. I mean that that last one I did because he, it was coming into the last corner of Maggiore, and uh, I knew that I was that close up. But if I could just come out and and outbreak him and just get alongside, I would probably be able to kind of go kind of side by side as we went around that corner. And if he tried to turn in, I'm turning in as well. But he's he's going to be stuck. And it just works. It just yeah, works. You, you had nothing to lose because if you, even if you had got a one second penalty, then you would have only finished up where you yeah. were before. So yeah, yeah, it was a it was a yeah. it was a good it was a good move, and it wasn't 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 a ram. It was just it was very much a kind of I'm here, turn in if you want to crash move, and he decided. It's yeah. Senna, not Senna move. That's what it was. So yeah. That's what yeah. Senna used to do on purpose. I mean, I'm not dis dissing the guy. This is at, I mean, you talked to Martin Brundle when he used to race Senna as in Formula 3. He used to say that Senna's approach was, I'm putting my car there. What happens next is up to you. <laughs> it's like, if you turn into the corner and I'm there, we both crash. Uh, if you don't, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much. And we're off. Now, I, I mean, there's a, such a thing as a block pass, and I don't think what you did was exactly a block pass, more of a sort of a shove pass. Yeah, sort of like... Yeah. Large pass, I'm shouldering my way past you now. <laughs> yeah, but he was a bit—he was a bit early on the brakes on the way in, so that gave you an yeah. opportunity to put your car. If he'd been on it throughout that corner, on the limit, you wouldn't be able to get your car on that position. It wasn't like you were—you were on the line. You weren't sliding wide. You know, you just—you'd come into the corner faster, taking a slightly different line. And um, if he'd been as the quickest car on the track, you would not have been able to do that move. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it. it it's a. It was kind of a 50-50 move, absolutely, but you had nothing to lose, really, unless you'd crashed out yourself. But when you're on the inside, that's a lot less likely than when you're on the outside. Yeah. So, yeah. And he'd been quite aggressive in previous moves. He had pushed me aside quite a bit. Um, so that's why I thought he'd give me actually no room and push me right out onto the grass and everything. So I thought exactly. like, at this point, no chance I'm going for it. That's what comes thing. around goes around. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a great race. I was, I really wanted you to keep going that night because you were doing really well. I know you had to do work. Yeah, and yeah. Work. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. that, well, that was that was Tuesday. Well, no, Monday, that was it. Yeah, I stopped a wee bit earlier. Um, but um, but yeah, no, no, that was that was the thing. But no, it was a good it was a good race actually. We did it did work out well. I also I, I think my defense my my defensive driving has improved a little bit. Here yes. Um, yeah, your so, defense you know, and I'm, offensive driving in that race were excellent, and I think the chat. People yeah. who are watching recognise that. Even I gave you a compliment to you. <laughs> yeah. I have done it once or twice. Is when you break on the apex and you and that can, and it just, you go almost slower than they're expecting, and that means they have to suddenly back off. And as yeah. long as you've got yeah. room to carry on, especially yeah. it was at um, Dragon Trail, I did that quite a bit when I knew the guys were faster behind me. They're on better tires, and I, and I had to just try and make the room before the chicane. Um, and if I could do that, then they were kind of off put quite a bit. So you would you would then accelerate out of the bend, and then they would be a bit they're a bit behind. Yeah, and if if uh, Rue and I were to ask you a question, um, I, I'd ask you where is that where you think you've improved your driving, your confidence is in the defense or the offense? Because you must realize that you're getting better, and your racing is getting better. Cheers. I think a little bit in the defense. Um, I'm also trying to get to learn from the guys who are who are really good because they sometimes say just don't get involved in it. You know, if you've got people who are going to just clearly come through let them get through and then follow them, um, you know, because then you don't hold each other up. Um, and some people just like that. Although, I mean, Monday night was crazy because folk were doing these crazy last-minute dive bombs coming out of nowhere. Um, that They had no chance. And you can almost feel it. You know, you can almost kind of get, uh, obviously, you see the radar, but you kind of know yeah. when they're coming and look in the mirrors. Yeah. And you don't often get the radar on, actually, Hugh. You've got the rearview mirror, I, I said. Yeah. I tend to forget. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you, actually. Just radar, radar, radar yeah, in the chat. Good. As Espen, yeah, yeah, Espen he's, is he's really particularly bad. keen on um, on 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 the radar from Sonjus Ford in Norway, isn't he? Yeah, had a good chat the other night about the temperatures and all the places we were. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's um, it's good. 
good good to see you get better at it and um but it doesn't matter with you whether you're racing around about 12th 13th 14th or first it's always entertaining and it's your commentary which is 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 entertaining too uh, i mean like last week we had uh, we were at barcelona and in group three and i was terrible at the start i was so slow i just felt like i was way off the pace but we started to get a bit better we started to get a bit more when they went in the mitsubishi it improved a huge amount um and other cars and it was really nice because i think the community kind of got around us and they gave us little bits of advice here and there you know and so it kind of moved us forward and then eventually we had to, although that was a penalty fest that was a really hard hard circuit for avoiding penalties i mean it was just you would be going on your own without anyone near you and then all of a sudden you get like a half second penalty for nothing at all it was kind of crazy um but uh, i know yeah, and similarly what was it i think we heard that the, the key 25 had deleted his gran turismo um, off his off his PlayStation or something. Oh, yeah. he had enough. I think was, I think he had a fit of peak, didn't he? He sort of threw his toys out the pram and uh, yeah. deleted it. Didn't he? And and uh, which he thought was completely unfair. Obviously, the last straw for him that broke the, the driver's back. And he's just like, right, fine. Uh, the penalty. I think he's crazy. I think he's going to re-download it again. But then, yeah, he is. Again, like, rather like um. Uh, well, we have conversations, you know, with Rui about F1 and how they put the safety car out and do they really need to put the safety car out. Sometimes the penalties, they do just throw the dice. They roll the dice, don't they? Now, see, I quite like, see, Rui probably doesn't like that, but I quite like the, the completely arbitrary nature of the penalties sometimes but does create... Like racing if it's arbitrary. If, if, if what you're doing is, you might as well just watch the National Lottery. If you want to see chance, watch the National Lottery. If you want to see skilled driving, let them race. Yeah, but yeah, I want to be entertained as well. So it's it's. But if if they took away, you see, to me, it, that's all about the design of the car. If you have a car that allows you to to race closely, then you don't need any of the messing about um, because you, they're, they're close and they can follow and they can battle and they can bop each other and stuff like that so you know it's just um i just find it false it's like watching wrestling it's kind of made up so to round things up because it's nearly half an hour and i think that's probably what we should we do that i want to ask you a quick question because john asked you about how you think you've improved i wanted to ask has there been any specific advice from anybody that's helped the most Mm, that is a hard one. That's a hard one. Um, because both David Perel and Super GT have given really in-depth detail um, as to how to go faster. And they say, like, you know, watch that. Super GT say, like, watch the videos. And I, I kind of have to do that a little bit, but I'm, I kind of want to learn myself. And I kind of think if I can't learn the thing myself, I'm yeah. not good enough. You know, I kind of think, all right, I, I should know this or I should be learning how to yeah. do it better. Um, uh, but also in exile, uh, James got some, you know, he, he talked about make sure that you're that you know it's it's the slow corners the going onto the streets that you need to get right so if you can get those right you'll be much faster onto the streets and so it's trying to put that on together and, and work on it um and just yeah it's kind of avoiding the issues that are going to hold you up the right the right gearing tijney was fantastic for um telling you like what gear to be in and how he's very good for if he's driving a road car you know it would be in a higher gear sometimes because that makes the car a bit more stable as you go around some of the bends you know um, and uh, and also people like Pierre Cart, who said that in a lot of it, once you get to the, that last second or so between the top guys, a lot of it's just kind of glitches almost that, they, that you can do in a game that you can never do in real life. So they might come into a corner and momentarily change down into second just to get a bit more turn in. And then halfway through the corner, they change up to third. So it's little things like that that you could never do in real life because it would blow up the engine or whatever. Or just, you know. um, so, yeah, so it's, it's interesting how it's all worked. But I'm... <laughs> I do, I'm trying just to get faster because especially in things like Group 4, I try and aim for it to be about a second off the top 10 if I can, um, and maybe one and a half seconds off the best time in the world. So that's kind of always my target. Um, I've not been there. I've been a wee bit out in some of these tracks, but then they not tend to be my best tracks. But I, I think I you should top. watch the videos, Hugh, because I, I, I'd make a point of watching it. I know what you mean, like you want to learn yourself, but I think once you've done 20, 30 laps getting as fast as you can, then go and watch the top guys and see what they're doing. Yeah. And I mean, I find it myself, I'm not nowhere near as quick as you, but I can improve like a second by going back to the video. And sometimes you see, for example, yeah. at Lake Majore, that is it turn four, 
you can cut that corner almost you can cut almost two car widths inside that corner before you get a penalty so if you look at that you go hang on a minute i can gain half a second there and it's only from the video that you'll find that out also the use of gears i think generally you're in a lower gear than you should be a lot of the time when you're losing time on the other people as i was teaching you said keep higher gear but watch the, the videos definitely watch the fast videos because yeah, it gives it all away right. just watch the gear selector and as you said sometimes they just go two three back as they turn in as you said it would blow the car up but some people seem to obviously make that work for them so yeah. I, I really yeah. watch the videos and i reckon you'll gain half a second so one thing that annoys me is that when they cut the track so much I kind of feel that's not really racing because you know you wouldn't be allowed to do that at all in real life. You'd never be allowed to do that. You'd be black flagged or they'd be getting a penalty. Well, you know, because but, but it depends on the rules, Hugh. Some tracks you you yeah. can do that in real life. Sometimes they allow you to run a car width outside the white line. If all the drivers and the race director agree that before the race, then you you can yeah. do that. Every F1 race that they have a list of the corners that you must not go over the white line here. We know that because uh, Albon every time he went on the track was always going off yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. penalties and his time deleted if you look at the number of times their times get deleted but only on certain corners corners that they believe there's going to be a genuine uh, uh, advantage by cheating yeah, yeah that's and, and 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 i completely agree with john that this uh, watching the way other drivers do it isn't not learning it yourself you are learning it yourself because you're you're seeing what they do and then you can gauge whether what they do is of any benefit to you, you give it a go yeah. you do it yeah, yeah, teammates in the team, they will want to look at each other's data. You know, they will look, they will be desperate to get Bottas or want Hamilton's data, Hamilton or want Lewis's data, or sorry, uh, Bottas's data, to see where they are making a tenth or a hundredth here and there. There's nothing wrong in doing that, Hugh. I, I think just spending 10 minutes with a, watching the top guys would be well worth doing. And it's quite interesting because you see, you can ask yourself, why does that work? Yeah. What, what is yeah. it about that? And then you can apply that to other corners on other tracks. It might be that it works there because there's a particular camera that they've programmed into the corner that isn't anywhere else. Um, so it wouldn't work anywhere else. But, you know, it's like, and, and again, about the cutting the corner. On that corner John's talking about, fine. You try and do that uh, at the corkscrew. Like, yeah. what you, and every time, you, you know, you'd get it perfect a few times and then, so the entrance will be a little bit wrong because somebody's in the way or something like that, and you'll end up straight lining it, and you get a two-second penalty. So it, yeah. it's all track-specific, it's corner-specific, and every single thing you can learn is is a, another little step. It's those little – you get to a point where you're fast, and then from that point onwards, it's little micro-increments, isn't it, aye, of every, every corner you go on. So yeah, I, think, I think you've definitely got a lot of that. We'll work on that board. Well, <clears> we'll, we'll round that up today. It's been a great show. And hopefully we can do this more often. So maybe every couple of weeks or certainly once a month, if not more. Uh, maybe even weekly if we can, uh, when people are available. Um, but I thought it's quite nice to have our own separate podcast because we did it before and it went rather well. And we can talk about how our show has gone and all the kind of things that are coming up and things like that as well. And of course, we hope you, the, 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 the listener, has enjoyed our show. If you've got any comments, you can email us at hughhattrick at gmail.com. And we'll do our best to ignore them. Sorry, I'm only kidding. We'll make sure that we include your comments um, <laughs> and questions uh, on, the, on the show for that. Um, but it'd be fantastic to do that. But um, as you say, we will finish the show there with, of course, our three legend phrases. It is, we'll drive fast and try not to crash. Andrew, what's the second one? Second one is, uh, make sure you win at the first corner. And Jonathan. Let's see what we can do. Let's exactly. see what we can do. <laughs> Take in your pants. We will see you live tomorrow night for the for the Gaz Sims interview at nine o'clock. Make sure you don't miss it. Take care and bye just now. Bye.